Welcome to this live event. Hosted by Scott Lewis, Rob Flick, Brent Gove, and the legend Gene Frederick, we will be diving into a conversation about the unique potential that is in real estate right now. So grab some coffee, buckle up, here we go! Hello, everyone, and welcome to Built for This Live. Are you serious about leveraging the vehicle of real estate? Our weekly show, We Were Built for This Live, is the missing link. If you want to avoid the mistakes most people make, accelerate results, and shorten the learning curve, get ready and buckle in. These real estate icons have amassed empires, generated passive income, and unlocked financial freedom. Every Saturday morning, we will deliver impactful action items from real estate leaders that have built successfully in all economic conditions. My name is Scott Lewis, and welcome again to my co-host, Brent Gove, Gene Frederick, and Rob Flick. Hey guys, how's it going? Morning. Going great. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So here we are another week. You know, I mean, these are crazy times. We're all gonna remember these times moving forward. Everyone's gonna remember 10 years from now what they were doing, what they were reading, what they were watching during this time, who they were listening to. And of course, our goal every week is to impact the lives of the people that are tuning in. And uh, I just want to say a huge thank you to our audience that, is, that has been listening in every week, getting so many unbelievable comments every single week, the gratitude, the thanks, the, the success stories. We love hearing them, guys. So I know you guys hear those a lot too. And so how was your week? Fantastic. No complaints here. It's a great week. How about you? I, uh, yeah, I would tell you this. Uh, my new name is Zoom Brother. <laughs> How many Zooms have you guys been on? Is this crazy? Oh, man. A huge number, like never before. <sighs> Love yeah. them. It's lot, lots of people are wishing they would have bought Zoom stock three years ago. <laughs> EXP stock three years ago, right? That's right. Uh, it's crazy. Taking off. Yeah. Everything's changing. The way we do business is changing. And, uh, you know, I, I'm so excited, guys, for our guest uh, today. We, we've got a powerful lineup. Uh, these two ladies are icons in the industry. They've created massive success. I, I know our guests are excited to hear from these two ladies. But before we do that, they want to hear from you guys. Rob, Tell us about your week. Well, I would, I would tell you this. One of the things that I'm thinking about is 
that whether we realize it or not, people are watching. They're watching us, they're watching you. You, you are an example. What you do absolutely matters. Your attitude matters. You're an example, even if you didn't plan on it or want to be. Your children are watching, your family's watching, your spouse is watching, your friends are watching, your coworkers are watching, your team is watching, other agents at other companies are watching you, other brokers at other places are watching you. People absolutely notice. People are definitely watching. I can only recommend that you be the absolute best you can. You wanna be the safe haven. You wanna be the person that people lean to, that go to. You wanna be the strength. People are watching and you are an example every day, everything you do, whatever you post on social media, everything is being looked at and you are a leader, good or bad, whether you plan for it or not. And so I believe that you really, really have to protect your attitude. You've got to have an outlook and a plan and you've got to have faith in the future without question. Faith is huge. And I have a feeling we're going to talk about faith more today, but uh, you know, I, I find myself, you know, going, man, you know, it's setting, you know, normally I'm always confident about my decisions. I know that you guys make a decision, you charge, and, and right now there's that hesitancy. There's that, you know, man, you know, should I rethink or should, should I really be dialed in on some of these things that, that I'm making decisions on? I think everyone is sort of second guessing their decisions, but never ever has there been more importantly a time to really charge after your vision and, and, and create your, you know, your lifestyle and create that mindset. And I know you guys are doing that. And people are leaning on you every week. I know, Gino, you, you're you're talking to leaders all over the country as well as Brent and um, and Rob. But uh, you know, tell us about your week. And you're back in Texas, right? And how's that feel? Well, it, it feels really good. Uh, my word for the uh, my two words for the week are number one, explosion. Number two, opportunity. I kid you not. In my life. 35 years in real estate. I've never talked to this many broker owners in my life. I had 10 in a row on Tuesday, Brent. 10 in a row broker owners calling us going, ooh, what's going on? I mean, they, we've always known our industry has been very heavily laden with bricks and mortar, with expenses. And I was a broker. We've all been brokers. I've owned real estate companies. And all my buddies, after being in the business 35 years, Scott, have all said they're all owning something, you know, either a small brokerage or a franchise. And they're calling me. They called me this week. I mean, I, I put my Zoom arms around them. <laughs> I Zoom. really did. I said, Zoom. guys, how can I help? What can we do? And uh, I've never in my life, 10 in a row one day, wow. I mean, from uh, offices with 15 agents to offices with 200 offices from South Carolina to California. They're starting to realize that we, we were built for this, right? The, the consciousness across the country is starting to resonate with the entire real estate community that, hey, th this company that we're a part of was built for this time. Well, you know, uh, Dave Kennard uh, said, I, I had a really good analogy this week. He, Dave, if you guys don't know, our president played a lot of lacrosse. Yeah. He played a lot of basketball, and I know – uh, Brent and uh, Rob both played rugby. You know, when, when you're on offense, he said, when you're on offense and you're running down the field, the defense has to pivot. The defense has to stop and turn and try to react to you. That's right. Our company has, we've never had to pivot during this. We're, we're, we're just on offense. Yeah. So we're going forward. What's really funny is we, you know, when I talk to these brokers, what they're telling me is how, how do I pivot from this? How do I, I Sometimes I have a hard time understanding. I said, what are you talking about? We, we're not pivoting at all. We're just going. Our accounting department's running smoothly. Our tech department's running smoothly. But then uh, you begin to realize that they can't get into their offices. They're out of a flow. They don't know what to do. And uh, we know, as we know, I ran a lot of offices before. 
If these offices have two to three months of reserves, God bless them, that's about it. So if times slow down and things slow down in their market, every market is different, guys. We're talking to America, but I'm telling you, there's 405 markets, according to Dave Steck. Let me tell you, 405 markets, so your market might be going crazy, and you're going, I don't understand, it's slow? Well, yeah. right? Yeah. right, Rob? 33 million people unemployed, 20% of our workforce unemployed. That's the only negative I'll say to you. <clears throat> but guess what? It's real. So some markets are going, huh. Oh. Yeah. That's but my big thing is opportunity and explosion. We're exploding. It is crazy to me. I'm sure if we talk to other companies, they don't have brokers calling them like 10 in one day. Brent, I know you're on them all the time. Tell me about yours. You're, you're going crazy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, every day talking to large independent brokerages, top producing agents, uh, very, very exciting. But I want I wanted to say this. We've all seen the YouTube footage of those people playing on the beach in, uh, in, in island countries, and here comes a tsunami. You know, one minute, one minute they're, they're playing catch and the kids are laughing. We've seen raw video footage and then they pan out <clears throat> and the tsunami's coming. And so I hope for the best, prepare for the worst. And, and there's going to be an impact to this, but we, we can make it. You got to be prepared. You want to be clean to a coconut tree, right? And so I, I'm so excited about what the future holds, but you got to make a while the sun is shining. And of course, I'm hopeful we're gonna they're gonna unrelease the states and this month, next month, the month after, there'll be no more COVID-19. We won't need respirators. Um, it's all real and we need to be super responsible and all that. But man, I'm I'm sounding the alarm. You need to get out there and do really, really well right now. And it's like Scott said, it's all about who are you listening to, what are you reading, how are you gonna capitalize on the moment? And um I know there, uh, just tell a short story, I was with my kids in the Sierras, my daughter in particular, she's 15, this is years ago, and she had gotten on the far side of a lake at about 8,000 uh, 8, feet elevation, Glacier Lake, freezing cold, and two of the other leader girls, they were 16 year olds, they were like Sherpas, they were leaders for this 19 person backpacking trip, they all jumped in the lake, and they started swimming back across the lake, they'd rather walk all the way back, it would have probably a 40 minute walk, but they go, we'll just swim across. And, and I, I stood up and I was a little angry. So I'm a little bit of a papa bear. And I'm like, that's stupid. And I'm, I'm, I'm pacing back, I'm watching them. And I'm going, they're going slow. And then I'm yelling to them, hey, you guys okay? And no response. And I'm, now I'm getting louder and louder. I'm in the lake up to my waist, it's freezing cold. Are you okay? There's three of them right next to each other, just motoring towards me, but they're still way out there. And I'm like, right and I start swimming out swimming out swimming out are you okay no response all of a sudden they got close enough I, I could see the whites of their eyes and they were terrorized they were freaked they were holding up one girl turned out it wasn't my daughter it was three teenage girls that that wasn't even my daughter but they were holding one up she had given up and the other two were keeping her from going under and I'm just like oh, I'd swim out there grab them grab the middle one and and they flipped over and, and so I want to tell you, this is your moment. This is the moment that you will look back on. This is your Tiananmen Square moment when some dude with a grocery bag is standing in front of a tank. you got to wake up and realize the time that you're in and go do something great with your life and not sell hot dogs on the beach. And you meet people, well, I'm not into doing this. I'm just going to keep my head down like an ostrich. Man, you better do something great. You better stick your chest out and, and go out and – <clears throat> really think what you're doing. Well, I'm about the mission, not the commission. Guy said that to me yesterday. It sounds holier than that. It sounds, I'm about the mission, not the commission. Really? Because I do what I do for money to provide for my family. I go out, kill something, drink, drag it home, feed it to mama. And I'll, I'll tell you this, you know, uh, it sounds so much better. You know, don't have commission. I, I get that. Of course, I'm about great customer service. Of course, I will bust my butt, give them the best I can give them, the red carpet customer service. But, bad, you better be about the commission. You better be about, be, it's, a, it's about net profit. It's people over profit. I get that. Love people, do the right thing. But you better, because I tell you what, your kids, they'll go to certain schools because you're about the mission, not the commission. Um, and he's a nice guy. He's probably watching. So if you're watching this, I love you. I told him on the call, I disagree with it. And so, you know, Paul was a tent builder. He did it for money. 
<laughs> right? He would have rather be preaching the gospel. So I agree. It's not all that I get. It. It's not about mansions and this and that. It's about whatever it is for you. But the, it does impact what you do impacts the neighborhood you live in or don't live in. Maybe it's a safe neighborhood. Maybe it's not. Where do your kids go to school? Maybe you'd rather have them in private schools. It impacts your whole life. So I'm the one going, man, now is the time to stand up and do something great. Like these two women who are champions in real estate, who are big mega stars at EXP, who are about to come on and listen to their stories. They're amazing. Uh, Sheila and Jenny, I can't wait to hear from them. But that's kind of what I had to say today. Be ready. Wake up. Smell the coffee. Do something great with your life. Do something that scares you every day. If you don't have fear every day a little bit, then you're just kind of cruising along. So that's my little message, Nosh, whatever you want to call it. And that applies to anything in life, Brent, right? I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you're selling real estate, if you're selling cars, or, you know, maybe right now you're unemployed. I mean, a lot of people have, have lost their job. But good friends have called me this week, you know, guys that had really high paying jobs that thought they were above all of this that have been there for a long time. And, you know, they're, they're sitting there going, man, what do I do? You know, I've never been in these shoes before ever in my life. You know, I'm scared, Scott, you know, and so like Rob said, you know, we, we can be a safe haven for people, not just because we have an incredible opportunity in real estate, but because we care about people, because we believe in people. And, and in our role in this, in this role, you know, we do have a, a, a life vest, Brent. We do, have, you know, it's not just a floating person. We've got a big boat. I mean, we got a ship. Jump on, right? Because things are happening. I mean, it, great things are happening if people will just, you know, take off the, the mindset that they've been carrying around for years and go, man, there's a better way. There's something different out there. And it can help people. And Gino, man, you're, you're helping so many people. I know every single week, I know you get, so all of you, you know, you're getting so many calls. But um, I think, um, you know, I, I'm just excited because I know that we were built for this and, and we're fortunate. We're, I'm fortunate because Gene Frederick shared this with Rob Flick and Rob Flick called me, right? I'm very fortunate. And I know, Brent, you're fortunate because the girl we're going to bring on here in a little bit you know, this beautiful lady gave you a call, right? So yep. we're all just one phone call away, one opportunity away from freedom, you know, lifestyle freedom and, and being able to help other people. So I'm going to let, um, well, I, anybody else want to say anything before we bring in our first guest? Bring them on. All right. right. So I'm going to pop this lady in here real quick, see if we can do this. All right, here she is. Hi, Jenny. How are you? You're muted, so be sure and hit the unmute button there. So this is Jenny Williams. Jenny lives in Alabama. She is known as the six-figure coach. And during 23 years in business, wow, uh, she's helping top producers and agents and team leaders. She's been a broker owner. Uh, she was a KW team leader for a while and a real estate coach. She's coached literally hundreds of successful agents with her six-figure intensity program. And her first year back in sales, she earned the prestigious EXP Icon Award. She's building a huge team with EXP. Welcome to Built for This Life, Jenny. How are you? I am fantastic. And oh my God, Jean, you have just been such a hero of mine. And I get to be on this with you. <laughs> So this is awesome, and uh, thanks so much for inviting me, Scott. Um, happy to be here. Love this company. Love everything that we are about, and uh, I'm just having a blast with it for sure. That's awesome. So how is your market reacting to the virus? So what's going on in Alabama for real estate? It is insane. It is, it's actually probably sped up our market. Um, uh, just um, yesterday, I showed a house, wrote an offer on it. There were four offers on it before um, three o'clock. I had to wait for a group to get out to see it. And there was a group waiting for me to get out. It sold way above asking price for cash money. Um, and that's about how almost all of our listings are going, unless we're just not hitting the price point that we need to be. Um, so it really, we, we haven't skipped a beat. It sped everything up for us, really. 
That's awesome. So I know we have a lot of guests here today that maybe are just brand new to eXp, or maybe they're brand new to real estate, or maybe they're thinking about real estate. And um, you've helped so many agents uh, jumpstart their career. What would you say today for someone that's struggling or just getting started in real estate? What, what should they be doing right now? Well, anybody who starts out in any market it needs to go straight to their sphere of influence and figure that out first, um, because those are going to be the people who help you rally around you. Um, they're going to be, you know, hey, uh, my my niece is brand new to the business. I know you're an expert, but I'm going to have to use her. I mean, you've got so many opportunities there as a brand new agent um, and tell everybody that you are brand new because uh, people want to be your first. Uh, I remember. I remember I sent out uh, a letter when I was 25 and just had my license, sent a letter out to my entire sphere of influence, my parents, friends, and uh, one of my mom's best friends from high school called and he said, I want to be your very first sale. And uh, I'm going to give you my dad's uh, uh, who passed away house. It's been sitting vacant and it's almost like he'd been waiting for me to, to, to get my license. And I ended up doubling to my very first one. I didn't know what to do. My dad had to, um, these couple walked in and said, okay, we want it. And I'm like, <laughs> my dad picked up the pen out of my hand and wrote it up. <laughs> you didn't even have another agent to coach you through it. <laughs> so uh, don't be afraid to tell people that you're brand new because people love enthusiasm um, over, uh, you know, a stale um, expertise. Um, so uh, uh, sing it from the rooftops that you just want to help people. Now, here's a really good tip that you need to know about what's going on in the market right now. Your market may be a little bit different, but uh, start with going after sellers because you're going to get in a trap if you start going after lots of buyers and uh, when you're brand new, you always feel like your expertise. I, I don't know anything about helping a seller. I'm not good enough to help the seller. You actually have everything that you need in your MLS system to help the seller. Um, and then, you know, put your work ethic behind it. Um, when you work with a buyer, you have to know so much more. But for some reason, there is um, a, a, a lot less fear helping a buyer. Um, you kind of just feel like you're doing something because you're showing houses. But when people are arriving, uh, you know, four and five offers, when you're getting four and five offers on a house, your buyers are going to get very, very frustrated and they're going to think that it has something to do with you. So um, you could be spending a ton of time and not seeing the results. Like Brent said, this is about profit um, uh, and you want to make some. <laughs> So spend that energy instead of showing, you know, a ton of houses, spend that energy finding your first seller. That's you've, been, you've been in real estate, you've been in real estate a while. And you've been with a few different companies. Why EXP? Why did you finally end up at EXP? Well, um, so I had been coaching and I had 50, over 50 one-on-one -on -one clients. And I also, my coaching company did the marketing for agents. And so it was a lot of work to differentiate a lot of people um, and have, you know, highlight their um, personality. It was very, very unique business, which is what's hard as hell to run. And after 10 years of it, um, uh, I said, I'm, I've got to do something different. And I always felt guilty about the idea of going back into sales because I was going to be competing with some of the people that I'd helped for 10 years. My clients stayed with me mostly for 10 years and uh, I had to get over myself with that. And, um, one of my friends and, uh, 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 I had trained him when I was a team leader at KW, he's a Remax agent. He called me and he said, you need to be at EXP. And I said, what, why would I go and suck up resources from a company? I'm not selling and contributing. That's ridiculous. And he said, no, I'm telling you, that's where you belong. It's set up for you. It's the perfect thing for you. It, you need to do it. And uh, he said, I own stock in it. And I said, you're a Remax agent and you own stock in it. Give me a break. I've never even heard of this company. And uh, that's how far my nose has been in the sand, helping these agents and not really looking at, you know, what's been going on. Um, and, uh, I just blew him off, you know, love him, trust him completely. I do most anything that he says, cause he's brilliant. He's a, he was a tax attorney and transitioned into real estate and, uh, he's uh, a mega agent now, but, uh, 
I blew him off. So I was talking to Gusty Gullis and uh, Gusty's one of my clients. And uh, I said, you know, Collier said that I need to, to be with EXP. And I said, that's so ridiculous. And he said, you need to look at it. You've never looked at it. And I said, I've never looked at it. And uh, he said, you need to take a second look. And uh, this is when he was owning brick and he was tired. I was tired. Um, and he said, there's no way as a broker owner that I can compete with this business model. And uh, you need to really look at it. So I started looking at it a little bit with that, still not knowing what I was going to do. And uh, Josh Williamson said, you need to meet. Um, and, you know, I've got a, a friend of mine. I watched Josh make the transition because I had been working with Josh and his brokerage when he owned it. And I called him and I said, you seem so much happier. You've done this EXP thing. I'm so proud of you. And he said, I am. In fact, one of my friends um, from Baton Rouge is coming over um, and uh, he wants to meet you. So uh, I, I said, I've always wanted to meet him. We have the same exact story. We've been team leaders. We've done coaching. We've both written books. You know, um, I've never had a chance to meet him before. And so I told my husband, I said, I'm going to have to listen to all that recruiting stuff. But that's OK. I can't wait to meet him. So exciting. <laughs> And he came in and he got me. He understood what was, he noticed the things in my office to turn everything around as a benefit for me. Um, he asked me questions. He did not give me a recruiting spill. And I pretty much joined a few days later. And uh, yeah, I kept it quiet though. I didn't really tell anybody because I was terrified to do that, especially my former Remax um, uh, owner, um, because he set up my coaching company for me. He gave me that opportunity and I love and adore him. And uh, that was hard. Um, that was probably the hardest part of it. And uh, Scott knows this. I was scared to tell anybody. <laughs> And finally, he oh, yeah. <laughs> kept trying to work me through it. I'm like, well, I don't want these people to be angry with me. <laughs> and finally, I just said, forget it. And so what would you say to someone right now that's thinking about, because there, there's probably a lot of people watching and a lot of people that are in your shoes that they either have been thinking about it or talking to someone right now that's thinking about it, but they get stuck in that thinking about it mode, right? Well, I'm thinking about it. What would you just, what would you say to someone that's caught up in that mental thinking about it mode? Well, I would say this, um, if all those people, um, uh, that you're worried about, if they truly love you, they're going to wish you well. And, uh, my, uh, clients came out of the woodwork to say, I hope that I get to compete for listings against you. And, uh, just so kind and so sweet. And then several of them came with me. So, um, you know, it's just, um, do what's right for you, show the passion for it, and people will rally around you. That's it. Um, all the fear that I had was just because doing something new and all the relationships about my relationships are everything to me. Um, I'm extremely loyal and uh, uh, it, it was ridiculous. Um, I've done so much for all these people. I should have just felt like, hey, they're, they're going to, you know, um, uh, want the best for me too. And they did. That's how it worked. Hey, uh, hey Jenny, let me ask you a question. This is Jean. Yeah. You know, it's funny when I hear you talking, um, aren't we all afraid of change? Yes. Aren't we afraid to change anything? You know, you think about it. Um, you are a coach and you've coached people for 10 years and you coach them to change. Yes. And I was so fearful. Right. Isn't that weird? I, I hear that. And I and look at you and I went, man, she's telling people to make sure they change every year, make sure they adapt, make sure they get better, make sure they, and then all of a sudden when you're going to make the change, you go, I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. So that happens to all of us. It's happened to me so many times in my career. I mean, I could go over every single change, every single move. I didn't move a lot. I was at one company at 21 years, but inside the company, I changed probably five times. I changed positions. I changed what I did because I think we need like, like Brent always says, you need to be challenged. Right. You need to be challenged. If you're in a comfort zone and you're going like this in life, ain't good. It's just not good. Yeah. So I just had to bring it in. And thank you for saying that. Another thing too, though, was totally ego. Like I've been telling and helping other people support them to these huge sales figures. And what if I can't sell anything anymore? I haven't sold anything in 10 years. So I was terrified of that because I put, I, so icon for me was um, a must. 
um, just to prove to myself. And because of what you were saying earlier, Rob, that people are paying attention, they do watch. And uh, um, I had to hit that award my first year back in sales. And it was just going to happen no matter what. <laughs> and what happened to you with the company when you hit that icon status? What were what was the result? What did that different than at any other company that you had happened to you here at EXP? And well, it, the only difference is just that sense of accomplishment and being able to say that, you know, I did that my first year back. And um, it's kind of like a badge of honor, like, okay, yes, I, I do know what I'm talking about when I've helped all these people before. I guess what I'm talking about is in relationship to stock. Oh, well, as far as getting my um, $12,000 in stock, absolutely. I'm about to get oh, another 2000 Say that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. $12,000 in stock. So if you are a top producer, this company makes perfect. You're going to provide for your family better than anybody else. And uh, it, it is um, life-changing. And um, that $12,000 in stock that I've already gotten, I'm going to earn another two and another two um, by giving back to the company and doing what I do anyway and love. Um, uh, it, I mean, you can't get, the company pays me to be with EXP. That's a unique experience, a good feeling, isn't it? It's a fantastic feeling. Um, and uh, I'm not to financial freedom like, um, you know, many people in the company are, but I am well on my way. Um, and I've had several sales um, that um, the virus has affected because of job loss. You know, you were talking about um, uh, job loss. Well, you, you know, when I, when I get my red share checks, they're very large. Many times they're larger than uh, the commissions that I'm, I'm going to be making. And uh, that's a safety net for my family that I can't get anywhere else, nowhere else. And I've been with another company that had profit sharing, the most I ever made in one year. And I had an army of people there uh, was $3,000. Um, and, uh, you know, if I told you what I've earned this year already, um, it would be ridiculous. You wouldn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I can probably handle it if you want to. I don't think it'll knock my socks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, yeah, not you. It wouldn't impress you much. Um, no, it does. It impresses me. Believe me. You're yeah. relative to new at EXP. What you've done is really, really great. So people need to hear what's possible. And um, it's, it's been $32,000 this year. And Plus um, stock. And plus the stock. And wow. uh, if I think about it too long, it will make me cry <laughs> because um, it is emotional. <clears throat> and you know, and uh, this, this is a business all about profit, like what um, Brent said, but we are people, people. We are in this business because we love the people. And um, it's just amazing when I can share this company with somebody and know that it affects their family like that. Hey, Jenny, quick, quick question for you. You were, you were a team leader at a big brand. I was a team leader at that same big brand. And so was Gene, yes. the three of us. So was I Rob. <laughs> Rob, were you a team leader? Yeah, I was. I actually was a team leader one time. Oh, my gosh. I did not know that about your story. I know you sold <laughs> the franchises, many of them for that I brand. Franchises in a region. All the region. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, okay, four of us, Scott was a librarian or something, <laughs> but um, so he, he only ran like the largest Century 21. He does look like the studio. Texas or something. But Jenny, quick question. I remember how um, I loved being a team leader at that particular <laughs> brand. And it was just, it was a blast. I really enjoyed my two years. I mean, oh, it's so hard. I, I thought it was fun and easy. And But, you know, if you're cut out for it, you're cut out for it. And I could definitely see how you're cut out to do it. And um, obviously Robin and Gene too, and Scott, but what was the, what's the difference between how you felt as a team leader then? We were hired guns, right? We were hired guns to inspire and, and recruit and build that brand. And what is it like now where you're kind of in the same position like a team leader, but is it the exact same or is it different? And if it's different, why is it different? I know my answer, but <laughs> um, uh, the compulsion is different. And like you said, you're hired to do that there um, and was trained with very um, awesome skills. And I did. I loved it. I loved that job. I loved being a part of it. It was the worst time ever to be a team leader. It was 
um, 07, 08, 09. Um, I, we had four offices in our area. I was the only profitable one. And the only way I did that is by putting office cubicles on and renting them to other um, companies that would pay $350 for a cubicle because it was the downtime. And, uh, you know, I had to cover a $12,400 rent every month. And uh, just that, that's what really makes me love EXP because I went through that. We don't have those struggles. We don't have to cover that light bill. We don't have to cover that 12,400 on one location <laughs> with, um, you know, the, the top salaries that I had and the staff that I had there. Um, so for me, it's compelling enough because we don't have all that pressure. I am just being able to change people's lives in a much bigger way. I mean, when somebody hits icon, oh my lord, um, you can't. What's your What's your overhead at EXP? So your overhead at that at the old brand was, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a month when you add up all the salaries and the lease and the you know all the different things you got to pay. Right. What's your overhead at EXP? Um, eighty five. Eighty five a month. What? Eighty five a month. Eighty five bucks. There you okay. go. Pretty cool. It is. And again, it all comes back because um, uh, uh, what I've earned in rev share just by sharing the company. And um, now I made a direct, I, I made a big decision whenever I came to EXP. I did not want to be known as the recruiter because I was well trained in that before. And I don't want anybody looking at me going, oh my God, there she comes again. Or, uh, you know, so I am now the anti recruiter. Um, I, I make everything very organic. There is no spam. There is, um, I let people reach out to me. Um, and, uh, there is something so authentic and genuine to that. It is not me going down rosters and calling people because first and foremost, I feed my family by helping buyers and sellers right now. So that's where most of my time is going to be spent. And like Rob said, you have to be a leader by leading by example. People are watching you no matter what. You don't have a choice. You are going to be judged as a leader and it's going to be as good or bad. And so I, I completely understand that. I remember telling my Remax owner that and he was like, oh, no, I don't want to be a role model. And I'm like, well, you just kind of are. <laughs> so, um, and, and definitely love him, too. But so, uh, I, I guess I'm not going to jump in, but I guess my question is, are, are you just as excited as you were as a Keller Williams team leader? Because you loved it. I loved it. But are, are you, I mean, it's okay if it's the same. Yeah. But no, is I'm it different? Excited. Is it different? It's it's different. Like bad different? Good different? How is it different? It's different because I don't have the expectations to put on me. I don't have the stress level of... Um, you know, a team leader gets fired. Um, uh, for, I got fired. Um, and that's a, a long, stupid story, but I'm happy to share. But um, gets tired. Of, I mean, fired if you're not performing. And you've got to have um, the pressure that you've got to burn and churn and burn and churn and burn and churn. Um, and you're not really getting the right people here. I get to be, I get to hand select people who called me and be in business with. And there's no pressure. It's so much better. And just the result um, and the benefit to the agent and their families is so much bigger and better. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. And the reason I say that is because I loved being a team leader. I loved it. It was fun. I had a blast. But when I shifted to EXP 10 years later, I was 09, 010. Man, I never got up at 5.30 in the morning and go, let's go have breakfast. Let's have coffee. Let's plan. Let's, it was like, when I compare the two, remember, I loved it. It was a one. What This is a 10 for me, for my personal, just how it makes me feel, the excitement, the, uh, it was, it's a one and a 10. It's like night and day. It's like a different universe, not a parallel universe, a completely different thing. And, um, and I, I just, I can't believe it. Cause I never thought I, anything would make me, it's, it's like not even close. And, um, and we're, and we only succeed if we help other people succeed. There was only one team leader. Now I'm ra I'm raising, I had a call Wednesday night with 674 team leaders that are part of what I'm doing. That's almost, cool. almost 700. And we're changing their life. We're focused on it's different. You know, of course, we're helping them sell real estate, buyers, buy, sellers, sell. But this is so next level different. If you're like, what is he talking about? Watch one of the webinars about EXP um, and then get 
talk, get back to somebody and, and talk to them more about the company, a good friend or whoever's been talking to you about it. But yeah, sorry to jump in, but oh, it just, it, and I haven't lost that in three and a half years. And we have 135, I have 135 um, in my group. And um, uh, so that's, I joined December of 2018. So, um, just being able to help those people grow theirs. That's what I spend a lot of my time doing. And it's so much fun. Um, it is so much fun and you don't have to pay me to do it because I get paid later anyway. <laughs> so, um, it, it's just a, it's a whole different thing than being a team leader for sure. The one last question for you, and then we're going to bring on our next guest. Um, where do you see your business go? I, I know you were very instrumental in bringing on Gusty and Brick uh, Realty who's been a huge addition to the company. I know you guys just brought on a huge team down in Auburn and, and they're exploding. So you're, you're taking over Alabama already. Where do you see your business going in the next year or two years? Well, um, of course, I'm still focused on sales. And uh, my husband loved this company so much. He's a home builder that he got his license because he wanted to be a part of it. And that is huge. Mr. Skeptical, Mr. Very Logical. <laughs> he, and he had his first sale yesterday. So I'm so proud of him. Uh, and together, um, and especially just, you know, with all of our organization and having the wealth chart out, we've got it on our refrigerator. We go over it all the time. We keep that vision there. Um, you know, we want to um, attract and change the lives of 500 people. And um, we want to be able to do that with over the next two years. And, um, you know, that's, that's my vision. And uh, I don't know if I'll continue to do sales because I want to, the agents, uh, you know, always end up getting my heart. And uh, I, I stay very focused on um, their businesses. So I can see myself going and, and focusing back on that again and probably not being in sales in a few years. That's beautiful. Well, we want to thank you so much for being on Bill for this live. You are a rock star. Uh, tell your family hello, and uh, we hopefully will see you again soon. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. This was an honor to be here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Brent. So I'm going to turn the spotlight over to you because I know you definitely want to introduce this. Next <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Heck yeah. So um, our, our next uh, guest today is Sheila Fergeron. She's from Dallas, Texas area. I met her about five and a half years ago. Thank God I met her for 30 seconds in the lobby of the Plano Marriott at a Haas Pratt event. And she uh, remembered me and she called me three and a half years ago and changed. There's like uh, Jesus, my wife and Sheila. Okay? That's like a, the trifecta. <laughs> and uh, Sheila, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Uh, she changed my life. I tell my kids, I found my thing at 51. Don't freak out. My 27-year-old daughter's like, I'm not where I want to be yet. I go, honey, I wasn't where I wanted to be until I was 51. It's okay. Just tell you. She said she felt our friend heard that. So, Sheila, you've changed my life. You've changed the life of so many people. You're a class act. You're amazing. I love you. She's Tell us, tell us real quick your story, Sheila, um, what you did prior to um, coming to EXP, a little bit about your background. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for, for having me here. I'm so grateful for each one of you. And uh, before I came to EXP in real estate, I had been running a brokerage and I had 12 offices in four states and I had 15 REO contracts and we were um, a HUD broker from Dallas to Arkansas. And uh, my team and I had 40 agents working for me and we sold about 6,000, 7,000 homes together uh, before I came to EXP. And you still found time to go to Haas Pratt because you were learning based, sharpening the ax and, and your sword and, and then, wow, so I'm so grateful. So um, why EXP? I mean, obviously you were very successful. You built a pharmaceutical sales team for pharmaceutical sales prior to that. And you've always, you know, kind of done well, blossomed where you're planted. What was it you saw in EXP? Why EXP? Well, for those of us who are, or were REO or HUD brokers, we we realized how hard business was. I mean, we had to have everything in by midnight every day. So I was working 17 hours a day, seven days a week. And if my agents didn't get it done, I had to get it done because we had a contract we had to uphold. 
So I was killing myself and single mom, two boys, mm -hmm. just trying to, you know, make a living. And I went to uh, update my broker's license because I was the VP running the brokerage and the gentleman who owned the brokerage was older. So really I did everything. I was in control of the brokerage, but I was updating my broker license in a school in Dallas and Mr. Rob Flick came in the door and I usually never stay for lunch. I'm too busy, too many deals, too much, too much stuff going on. But I think it was raining that day or something happened. But for whatever reason I stayed, there were 50 of us in the room. And by the time Rob was done talking, I was on the edge of my seat because what I, the number one thing that caught my attention was leverage, the thought of leverage. And the first thing that popped in my head was 50 states. I thought, okay, I've seen the market crash. We've all lost stuff. I mean, the craziness we've all been through being in real estate all the years. I realized that if I could build what he was talking about, what he described as being able to build a team anywhere because we weren't a franchise, we were a corporation. That to me was a ding, 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 ding where if I could have people in all 50 states, if Texas was doing bad, California wouldn't be. If New York was doing bad, Florida wouldn't be. So for me, it was a leverage of spreading and being able to build around the country. At that time, we weren't talking about world domination. We were talking about domination in the United States. And so for me, it, it really was about leverage. And I really believed what he said. So I quickly set up a meeting and my friend Gino over there came up from Austin and he and Rob and I met with the owner of the company because he was like my dad. I love the man. And I said, I can't leave without talking to him. And he graciously said, hey, listen, you need to do this because it's the best thing I've ever seen. And he'd been in the business 40, 50 years. And he said, but I, I'm getting ready to retire. So I'm not going to go. And that's that's how it happened <laughs> and how has it, how has exp affected your life now since then but that was just a short three and a half years ago not quite four yeah it's three years nine months this month so uh wow. you know it's like asking mark zuckerberg when he was sitting in his dorm room how facebook would change his life that's really what you just asked me <laughs> wow that's because that's idea. That's really the power and the extremeness of what has happened in my life and the lives of all of the people that I've worked with. Wow, great answer. Well, what, would you, what, would you, what would you recommend, oops, sorry. What would you recommend to a person who is just now an agent, who is just from any company at any level, just now coming aboard to EXP? What would you suggest that, uh, what would you tell them to do? They're just getting it started at EXP. What would you tell them to do first, looking back on what's happened to you, with you? Mm, well, that's a hard question because, you know, when, when I started thinking about it this week, when you guys asked me to come on, I started thinking about, you know, what is the difference between who I am now and where I am now versus where I was when I was running the other brokerage? And the thing that really stuck in my head was something that, I don't think we we talk about enough is that when we come into the company, we come in with the old mentality because we all worked in the old model and in the old way of doing things in our old structure. And even when we come to the company, it's like we're bringing that old baggage with us. And I think it takes us a little bit <laughs> to shake that stuff off, you know, and, and finally understand and grab a hold of the attitude that this new model offers us. And so I put a post up on my Facebook today that was uh, a quote. It says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And so what really strikes me about EXP is, you know, we've all spent many years reading the Red Book or talking about the one thing. And, and really, when you start thinking about it, that old mentality and that old attitude, it's like, it's true that it is about the one thing, but the difference with EXP, it's the power of one, the power of the one team, the power of the one force, the power of the one collaboration, the power of the one culture. We work in a way that isn't just in one little office or one little franchise location. 
Because the truth is, when you look at these other bricks and mortar brokerages around the world, even, they're not all owners in that company. <laughs> that, that one guy at the top's the owner in that company. We're here. We are all owners in that company around the world. We are all one big fire, one big team. And that leverage is mind blowing when you really get it, when you really understand the power of what we do together. That's powerful. And by the way, I want to take a chance to publicly say congratulations for being, you are actually the fifth highest paid revenue share earner in the entire company. And congratulations very, very much to you. You are probably one of the most powerful, dedicated, um, helpful person that I have met, truly. I think your, your thoughts and your ideas are always on the other person. How can you help them? And how can you um, make their life better too? Just like what's happened with you. I mean, it really is interesting. Most people have no idea what that means. You're saying, my life has been changed. It's affected me. I almost never hear people say, oh, this company changed my life. It just isn't that way, like I'm hearing at EXP. Right. Really specifically, tell the people that are watching this, especially the women, what that means. How has your life changed and how can theirs change if they want to? Whew. It, it's changed in every area of my life. My financial situation has changed. My ability to provide for my boys as a single mother has changed. My ability to donate and contribute to my church has changed. My ability to support uh, projects and missions around the world, my ability to serve. And, and truthfully, one of the biggest things recently I've seen in the last couple of months is just my level of leadership has completely transformed being at this company. I, I've i led my whole life. I led a company in the pharmaceutical business. Before that, I led radio stations in the media business. But I can tell you, I have completely transformed in my level of leadership and in my, in, in not just leadership, because I think a lot of people think of leaders of the top down kind of mentality. I'm talking about servant leadership. I'm talking about partnership. I'm talking about that power of one of us together has changed my life and it, it is changing everybody else's life that I'm involved in because I have money now to be able to buy platforms, to be able to buy leads, to be able to serve the people that are with me, to be able to support people who need help. I mean, it goes on and on and on. It isn't just one thing. It's, so, it's like a domino effect of so many ways that our lives are impacted because of this one amazing company that Glenn created for us. I mean, it just, it's beyond, you cannot, you cannot grasp it until you live it. You cannot grasp it. And when you're watching from the outside, it's like, ah, you know, that's a bunch of baloney or that's just a bunch of whatever people say. But until you're in it and living it, you can't even describe it about how powerful it is on this, on the other side. <laughs> On this side. <laughs> Sheila, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but when you're talking to us, you're literally rocking. I've been watching you. I don't even think you're aware of it. I and am it, so it, on fire. I know. I literally am like, ah. Like, I know, I know. So <laughs> I, I just want to take this moment to publicly thank you because when I got an EXP, I must have called you eight times a day for two months solid. They were like, Brent, I got to get back to selling real estate. But we had so much fun together. And I noticed Gene Frederick coined the term. I heard it day one, EXP, making real estate fun again. You yeah. actually put it up as a banner behind you. I, I love all your slogans and, and what you're into. Why? Why for everyone watching, why is EXP making real estate fun again? Is it the hope? Is it the uh, joy? Is it the team? The teamwork makes a dream work. What is it? Why, why is EXP making real estate fun again? Whoa. What does that mean to you? Well, when you think of um, most of us came from other big brokerages, right? And you, the word culture is thrown around a lot or the word collaboration is thrown around a lot. 
but the level of support and the level of mastermind and the level of co co uh, collaboration. Think about this. At a normal brokerage, you have one trainer. You have one broker. If you're lucky to get the broker on the phone, you have one maybe office manager and a few assistants. A big broker maybe will have five, 10 people. Like that's a really big broker, right? Make one tech person. Yeah, yeah, you're lucky if you have a tech person, right? right? So when you talk about having 600 people at your fingertips by the push of a button on your computer, literally in the snap of a finger, being able to get an answer, being able to fix a problem, being able to get support 11 hours a day. And I know that they've talked about once we get some of the other parts of the world running, we're going to operate 24 hours a day. Holy mackerel. How much better can that be? How much, how much more could you ever ask for? So for me, it's, you know, I look at, I look at it two ways because to me it's about the people and it's about the tools. So the first thing you have to look as at is the people. So I've seen posts on Facebook, you know, people asking, what about this EXP thing? And then you hear the goods and the bad and people commenting. And I, I started thinking about it yesterday because there was this huge post on one of the Facebook pages. People were boom, 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 boom about EXP. And I said, honestly, it's really about you. It's about what do you need? It's about where are you at in your business? And where can you go to have your needs met best? And the thing I love about what Glenn created is Glenn is a people person. And Glenn thought about the people first. He thought about what does an agent need to be successful? What does a team want to be willing to make a move to support them? What does a brokerage need to give them the leverage to not have to run the brokerage by themselves anymore? So really, when you look at what Glenn did, he really thought about the people and every position that they were in throughout the business and then created something that truly was the answer for each one of them, wherever they were at in their business, wherever they were at in their process of, of, of their time in real estate. And I can't imagine any company being able to offer what we offer truthfully and and i'm very analytical i really pick things apart um and i've looked at all the other models i just i have never seen anything like this hey can i bring something up because i think this is a perfect time to bring it up i've been here five years rob and scott four years three and a half years for brand whatever did you ever imagine us having a convention with five or 10,000 people in the cloud. I did, but not in the cloud because we talked, uh, Brent and I have the 30,000 mark in our head. We're both shooting for 30,000. So, well, um, but in the cloud is mind blowing. So think about it. Sheila. I love it. You and I are living in uh, Puerto Rico together now, right? We were yeah. Texans, now we're Puerto Ricans. Same with Scotty and same with Rob. But when yeah. I think about this. Hey, Brent. Hey. Sorry for you, but, hey, I live by Napa. Don't feel sorry for me. <laughs> Puerto Rico. But when you think about it, guys, to think because of this virus thing, we could have done it in the cloud every year, right? Now we're going to show people next week. We're going to have four day uh, convention. We're not, we're not missing our convention. Just think of that. We're not missing the training. We're not missing the, the things. Hearing Glenn give the vision speech. Here, you know, Jason and Stacy get up and, 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 and Dave and all our, it's just awesome. When I think about it next week, I'm so pumped. I've never been so pumped to turn on my computer ever in my life. Now, I, you said one thing, Sheila, and I want to end with it for me. We all have old baggage. I call it old tapes. You know, I was in the business 30 years before I came to EXP. I had old tapes, a lot of old tapes. I had to get rid of the tapes. I had to just take them and throw them away and put two tapes in. That's the hardest thing I think people to understand because they keep looking at us as if we're Blockbuster, right? And we're Netflix. We're so different, guys. We are so different. And the other thing you said, I'm telling you what, and Rob told me this. We were never there when Bill Gates, Rob was close, 
We were there, never there when Bill Gates started Microsoft. I'm the exact same age as Bill Gates. I didn't get to go to Harvard. I didn't get to go to be in his dorm room. But by gosh, five years ago, when Rob and I sat at my lake house back here and we talked, I think, Rob, you even said to me, I'm not missing out on this one. I'm not missing out on this one. I want to be there from the beginning. And we're just now starting. So I had to say that. Sorry, Sheila. No, that's awesome. Yeah, no, when you had when you had showed me this, knowing have you know, having built the other company before, you know, to big enough heights to be able to retire on a residual income, that that was powerful. But when you laid out all the different things that EXP was going to provide or was providing, and um, I looked at that model, and because we don't have the brick and mortar, we don't have that overhead. They're allowed, they're able to plow back 60, 70, 80% of the money that the agents pay the brokers back to the agents in stock and in revenue share and in cash flow to the agents, not to mention lead generation programs. I saw that and said, how can anybody resist? And I told you exactly that on your porch. I cannot miss out on that. And I had been retired for a while and very enjoying it, no question. And I, I remember thinking, wow, you're going to take me out of retirement. And I said, there are people that need to be blessed that are going to be blessed like never before. And it makes me think very much of that very first day that I met Sheila. That was, that you know, nothing is by accident. I don't believe that. And I, I didn't talk at that place very often. I was there just a few times. She was there. She has impacted literally thousands and thousands of agents' lives um, throughout North America. And she certainly affected my life. I, I really appreciate everything you've done, Sheila, and you leading us to Brent and all his leaders. It is just that thin red line that makes, that makes real estate fun again, you know? And I want to say thank you so much, Sheila. I'm very proud of you, and and uh, I just love what you're doing and who you are. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Hey, Sheila, you know, a lot of people watching this are going, yeah, but am I too late? I mean, there were 1,300 when Gene got there. There were 400, and now there's almost 30,000. I mean, we could hit 30,000 this week or next. I mean, 30,000. You guys, there's 2 million in North America. We're going to have 400,000 in North America and a million worldwide. You know, there's 25 million agents and brokers worldwide by best estimates. We're going to have a million a cent. There's 370,000 coming in North America. There's a million worldwide. We're going to be in 40 countries. I mean, it's what would you say to people watching this that are worried? Yeah, but Sheila's got them all or it's too late. What would you say to the person who thinks that they've missed the boat? Um, you know, I mean, we've been on gravel roads with potholes and pioneering this thing. I mean, we could all tell the war stories, right, guys? Yeah. And, and, Sheila, and so uh, what, do, what would you say to that person who thinks they're too late? I've missed it. I would say 50 percent of the transactions that will be done in the next five years are by agents who haven't even gotten their license yet. There you go. Great answer. Love it. That's a beautiful answer. Well, I want to echo the sentiment of all my co-hosts here, Sheila. You've been a huge inspiration to me. And thank you so much for your leadership. And, you know, we, we all need someone that pushes. And I know when you've spoke from stage many times, every time I, I start crying or I'm, you know, I mean, you just, you empower so many people. And it's just such a beautiful thing to have you a part of this company and what you've done and what you're building and your leadership. So never second guess what you're doing because you are crushing it and we love you. And we are so grateful uh, for the leadership that you provide this company. And thank you so much for joining us today. It was truly a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you, gentlemen. Very, very grateful for all of you and very blessed by you. So I want to uh, put up a little, I hit the wrong button here. Sorry about that. Um, next week is going to be awesome. So if I can share the screen here. So can y'all see that? Yep. All right. So next week we are going to have Mark Victor Hansen on the show. I talked Woo! to him this week. He is super excited 
about being part of our show next week. If you don't know who he is, he's written countless books. I don't even too many to count. Uh, <laughs> Chicken for the Soul is one of them. And he has just written a book called Ask. And I love that. We, I haven't read the book yet, but I am going to read it this week before the show because he gave me the highlights. And it's truly about asking for help. It's about asking for leadership. It's what we're all about here at EXP. It's about asking uh, someone to lead you. And so it's going to be an incredible show next week. You don't want to miss it. Same time. Thanks again to my co-host, Gene Frederick, Rob Flick, Brent Gove, and, of course, our special guest today, Jenny Williams and Sheila. Scott, can I say one thing real quick before we say goodbye to everyone? you got to be really quick. But go ahead. Okay, we're all, we all going to fly to Orlando like tomorrow night, Monday, and be there all week for a convention. Spend money on airfare, hotels, meals, convention tickets. You guys don't have to do any of that. Just really want to encourage you, attend the convention Tuesday through Friday. It's 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific, which, of course, is 11 to 5 Eastern. Put it in your calendar. Don't miss a bit of it. Attend all the speeches, the business speeches. Uh, Alan Goldman, our CFO, will be doing a State of the Union address on our, on our financials. There'll be Wall Street there. Um, hedge funds. It's going to be a big deal. It's our shareholders convention. Chances are you've never been to one because you don't own your company with your broker. You just work for your broker <laughs> and he's going, oh, shiatsu. He's not <laughs> right now. So come be with us. That's this week, Tuesday through Friday, 8 to 2 p.m. Pacific, Tuesday through Friday. We will all be there. We will all see you there. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Bring your guests to that for sure. And a huge shout out to our executive team, Jason Guessing, Dave Kennard, um, you know, our, all of our brokers, all the people behind the scenes that are putting it together. And uh, I know they're working around the clock. Um, Stacy Onan, Curtis Dixon, we could go on and on and on naming the people that are literally working day and night to put this convention together. And as Brent said, if, you, if you're serious about changing your future in real estate, you should just come check it out because you're going to get to hear from Glenn Sanford, of course. Uh, you're going to get to hear from people like on the board of directors like and Jeff Whiteside, Jason Guessing, uh, our fearless leaders. So uh, we're going to wrap it up from here, guys. But uh, we look forward to seeing you. We're here every week. Join us next week. Mark Victor Hansen, built for this live, and have a great week. Love you guys. Bye. Thanks again, Sheila.